Welcome to the Open Forum. Once again, we have that grand privilege of opening our Bibles and looking at this verse or that verse and trying to learn more what God is teaching. We're living in a day when God is revealing many things that have not been revealed through 2,000 years of history. Uh, it's not because the Bible has verses added to it. No, there's been no change of any kind in uh, the Bible in the last uh, since about the year 95, if there have been any, it's by those who are trying to make the Bible say something different than it should. But insofar as uh, those who are sincerely uh, trying to be faithful to the Word of God, in the original language, there has been no, no change of any kind. But it is dripping with lots of new information because it was God's plan and he indicates that in the Bible clearly it was God's plan that uh, much of what God wanted mankind to know would not be revealed until our day when we're just very close to the very end of the world but shall we take our first caller and learn what his or her question might be Welcome to Open Forum. Matthew 6. Welcome to Open Forum. Matthew chapter 6. Could you turn, come closer to your uh, telephone? Maybe we'll hear you better. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not able to get you. We'll have to go to our next call. Uh, welcome to Open Forum. Good evening. No camping. Yes. I have a question. Um, are the holy garments such as a tally and keeper to be worn? Are the uh, the holy garments meant to keep us? What are the holy garments? Are you talking about tally and keeper? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that. That must be garments that are provided by some church. Uh, and that has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with the Bible. Any garments that we put on today, regardless of what we're told by the priest or by the pastor or the whoever, uh, it, there is no such a thing as a holy garment. The garment that the Bible talks about that is holy is the covering for our sins it's spiritual altogether. It has to do with having the covering for our sins because Christ made paid the penalty of the wrath of God that we deserve for our sins. And that applies to those who do become true believers. But there is no such a thing as a literal holy garment insofar as the Bible is concerned in our day. Uh, the... the uh, True, the priests in the Old Testament uh, did wear uh, an ephod, for example, that was a holy garment, because it was pointing, it was a picture of of, of the holiness of, of God himself. But in our day, no, there are no such thing as holy garments. And thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Um, good evening, um, Harold. Yeah. Uh, could you read Matthew 27, verses 52 and 53? Yes, I'd be glad to do that. Matthew 27, Matthew 27, verse 52 and 53. There we read... And the graves, let's start with, with uh, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. Jesus is hanging on the cross and uh, uh, is almost ready to die. And then this happened, that the veil of the temple, that great curtain that separated the holy of holies from the holy place, uh, was rent in two from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. They were thro 
broken open, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his, that is Christ's, resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, what is your question? Um, I was wondering who the saints were um, that um, came out of the graves, and did they go to heaven um, with their bodies, of course, because their souls were already in heaven, right? Yes, you, you're you right on the right track. They, uh, uh, th These are the bodies of uh, where true believers had been buried, and uh, the graves were thrown open after a big earthquake, and then after Christ arose, and and there was also an earthquake just before Christ came out of the tomb. This 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 happened here, in, in on Friday afternoon, whereas Jesus arose early Sunday morning, and when he arose, uh, he couldn't go right back to heaven because he had to show himself and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, to all of us that he indeed had come out of the grave and then he went back to heaven but these people they uh, their bodies arose uh, immediately after Christ's body arose and they went up into the holy city and the only holy city that existed after the veil of the temple was rent was Jerusalem in heaven. They went to heaven. In other words, this was a a dry run, if you will, or a a picture, uh, an example of what the rapture will be on on May 21. And thank you for calling and sharing. And you know, uh, it's when we see the earthquake here, and we see the earthquake uh, when Christ arose. And then when we read language like we find in uh, in Revelation chapter 16, where it says that there will be a, uh, in Revelation chapter 16, uh, and uh, in verse 18, and uh, there will be a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake. And so great. And that is the earthquake that it comes at the time of the rapture. And at the same time, all the remains, the corpses or the bones or the whatever is left, the, the dust, the ashes, whatever, uh, the unsaved will be thrown out like, uh, like the Bible uses the ugly language, like manure on the ground to be uh, desecrated. Uh, and shamed in the eyes of God. The, the people who are involved in, in this, uh, when their bodies are thrown out on the ground, do not have any conscious existence of this. They, they uh, never came to life again once they died because the wages of sin is death. But uh, nevertheless, in God's sight, they still had to be shamed as a, as a, part of the final punishment against mankind for their sins. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi. Um, can I ha uh, have you read verse um, Genesis 43, verse 16, please? Genesis 43, verse 16. Let's look at that. Genesis 43, 43, verse 16. There we read, uh, yeah, let me see, let me get the context here. And uh, the uh, uh, there was a famine in the land, uh, This uh, and Joseph was the second in command in the, in the nation of Egypt. He had been sold as a slave there, but in the ensuing years he actually became uh, uh, next, to e next to Pharaoh himself in power. But finally, because the famine was all over 
that whole area of the world. The the uh, family of Jacob, who was the father of Joseph, he sent his sons to Egypt to buy grain because they were going. They they needed that or they would die, and so they. But they had no idea that Joseph had risen to that great uh, power, and that they. And by this time, he didn't look like their. He looked like an Egyptian. He certainly dressed like one, and so on. And he was much older. He was been. He was sold as a slave when he was only 17 years old. So he was a very, very young man. And now he is. He is uh, over 30 years of age. And the man. Uh, uh, and now we read in verse 16 that when uh, Benjamin came, uh, along with his brothers, to uh, to get uh, food for their for uh, their families in in uh, in uh, the land of Israel when Joseph saw Benjamin with them he said to the ruler of the house bring men, these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon and the man man did as Joseph bade and a man brought the man into Joseph's house. Now, what is your question? Okay, the question I have is, uh, is isn't that a spiritual meaning that could be um, part of um, the verses that we're talking about Christ coming at noon, but it's a spiritual meaning because Joseph is a type of Christ? Well, I don't know. And, the, and, and uh, they're the slaughtering, fact... they're getting the meal ready for noon, which is the which we'll talk, um, could be talking about the I, I don't Last think Supper, it, the Last be, um I don't think yes. this has anything at all to do with the end of the world. It is dealing with that period that we call the Great Tribulation, which is that period... Well, now, let me think about that a minute. The Great Tribulation ends... Uh, at the time Christ comes, there might be a relationship, uh, but I, I, uh, insofar as trying to make this noon identify somehow with the coming of Christ, uh, I, I don't know quite how that would happen. I, uh, uh, maybe to be honest about it, I, I have never really looked at this passage to discover its spiritual meaning, and so I don't. I'm really not qualified to answer your question. Very frankly, I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, guess or speculate, and so I better not try to answer your question. I'm sorry. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello. Good night. Yes. The Revelation 20 speaks about two deaths and two resurrections. Best of those who take part in the first resurrection, because second death has no power over them. Now, what does that mean? Now, what re what reverses are you referring to? Uh, do you know? Can we look at the verses? Right. No, I can't. I know you read in Revelation chapter twenty. Yeah, well, we do know that the Bible speaks about Judgment Day as the second death, because it is the time when uh, those who are physically dead, that's the first dead, experience the remainder of the wrath of God that comes against them, which uh, actually includes being shamed in the eyes of God as their bodies or remains are thrown open and desecrated in God's sight, and also the fact that they're going to be annihilated so that by the end of of the five months of the day of judgment there will be nobody uh, existing anymore um, and the whole planet, planet earth itself will be destroyed forevermore now the two resurrections oh uh, uh, let me see you're you're talking about uh, uh, in verse uh, uh, six, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On the sec, on the such, on such the second death hath no power, 
but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, fir- the, 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 the first resurrection are those, the, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection is what we receive when we receive our glorified souls in which we're going to live forevermore with Christ. Uh, they were dead spiritually, and now when we become saved, we have a, they are alive forevermore. The second resurrection would be the time when we receive our resurrected bodies and uh, uh, go up as a glorified spiritual body and live with Christ forevermore. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. The number to call is one eight hundred three two two five three eight five. One eight hundred three two two five three eight five. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Matthew six sixteen and seventeen. Matthew six sixteen and seventeen. Let's look at that. Matthew six. Matthew six sixteen and seventeen. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now, what is your question? Chapter, I mean, verse 16, uh, what was their reward when they were trying to be... Oh, the reward is the uh, is the acclamation of their friends. Oh, look, uh, remember the remember in Luke uh, eighteen uh, 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 how this uh, pre how this Pharisee was so proud of his fasting. Look, uh, look at uh, Luke eighteen. Uh, God is speaking about a Pharisee and said in verse eleven. As he's praying, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, as as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Uh, I fast twice in on the Sabbath. Actually, on the Sabbath, actually, it isn't the week. That that's a wrong translation. I fast twice on the Sabbath. I give tithes of all that I possess. In other words, he's bragging about how holy he is. He is. And uh, on Sunday, or on Saturday, right away, right, rather, which was his, the seventh-day Sabbath that the Jews were to observe in that time, he didn't eat. And, oh, my, he was really proud. How Look how holy he was. And uh, he, he had his reward, his friends, and people that, that became aware of this said, oh my, that Pharisee is really holy. He does it. He fasts every Sunday and maybe some of them, or every Saturday rather, because that was a seventh day Sabbath. And in other words, their reward was the, was the uh, praise of men. But in, in God's sight, it was all terribly wrong what he was doing. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, uh, Mr. Campion. Yes. Could you read uh, Proverbs 14, 14 and uh, explain that to me, sir? Let's take a look at it and see, see if we can understand it. Proverbs 14, verse 14. We read... 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, 
and a good man shall be fast satisfied from himself. Now, what is your question? Oh, do you just want me to explain that? Well, you know, the backslider is someone who has never become saved. He is trying to prove to himself and to others that he is a child of God. And because he has not become a child of God, he, is, he tries real hard to do the will of God. But then he finally, uh, he, the, the world becomes too attractive again, and so he falls away from uh, doing the will of God because he never did become saved and and uh, uh, he is filled with his own way but he's not filled at all with God's way and then the good man uh, from himself same thing the man who is trusting in his goodness oh I'm so I'm so faithful to do the will of God and he's filled with that but he has no blessing at all from God he is just trusting in everything that he is, his 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 whole focus is on me. Look how holy I am. Look how righteous I am. And it there's no humility about it. There's no. It's not like the walk of a true believer at all. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome, to Open Forum. Could you briefly explain the differences, the contrast, the differences between the ordinances written, handwritten by Moses that were placed beside the Ark of the Covenant as a witness? Um, uh, the Ark of the Covenant housed the Ten Commandments, which were eternal. Now, Moses' ordained ordinances were temporary until Yeshua fulfilled those. Could you just explain the differences between the Ten eternal commandments of Yahweh, blessed be his name, and the ordinances which were temporary, which were contrary to us, that is explained in Colossians 2.14. Because there is a, I'd like to hear your explanation for that, because the, the temporary, the, the infallible uh, perfectness of the Ten Commandments are a joy for us to keep. The, the no, contrary uh, thing for us to keep was the ordinances which were against us. Let's so look at, let's look at Colossians chapter 10 verse 15 Colossians 10 no there, there is no Colossians 10 verse 15 uh, it's uh, you you uh, the Colossians only has four uh, four chapters but anyway the fact is uh, this is that 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 uh, the Ten Commandments are part of the law of God, but the whole Bible is the law of God. And uh, if this, uh, if you are interested in the Ten Commandments because the Fourth Commandment is there, well, then we're through with this call because we we don't want to we don't want to get back under that subject at all. You're not listening to the whole Bible. I'm sorry. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to the Open Forum. Again, uh, we're ready for the next call. Welcome to the Open Kevin? Forum. Yes. Hey, I want to uh, do a look at Isaiah 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. Then yes. I have a question. Isaiah 51. Verses 1, 2, and 3. There we read Isaiah 51. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Jehovah. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For Jehovah shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of Jehovah. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and a voice of melody. Now, what is your question? I'm sorry, Mr. Campion. I was trying to tell you uh, Isaiah 61, not 51. Isaiah 61? 
61, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now that's 6, 1, 61. Yes. And verse 1, 2, and 3. The Spirit of the Lord God, is that it? Yes. The Spirit of the Lord, of, uh, the Lord Jehovah is upon me, because Jehovah hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison unto them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Jehovah, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah, that he might be glorified. Now, what is your question? Okay, my, my question is mainly where he says to uh, proclaim uh, the acceptable year of the Lord. Was God, is God prophesying there that we would be able to proclaim 2011 as the acceptable year of the Lord? No, the the acceptable year of the Lord was that began with the church age as God uh, made provision to send the gospel out into all the world. And the whole New Testament era had been the acceptable year. That uh, uh, That is, it is the, it is the time that is, uh, 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 be, you notice it says, He hath sent me uh, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those that are bound. I believe that uh, this has to do with uh, with the whole, uh, well, actually, two parts. It has to do with the church age and then uh, finally with the final 6,100 days of the Great Tribulation when again the gospel went forth. Uh, both of these would have to be in view they, because the acceptable year is when it is possible to become saved. But thank you for calling and sharing. Now we're going to have to pause for a uh, message and then I'll be right back with you. And so uh, in just a moment, uh, we're going to say, we're going to have to say, uh, well, let's wait for the next caller. We're continuing with the Open Forum, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Camping, I kind of get uh, the repetition of this program makes me feel so violated and degraded because of what is being taught on, on the Open Forum. I mean, w what gives you the right to teach this kind of a gospel that May 21, 2011 is going to be the rapture? I mean, come on. Well, how did, how, what's with the date setting? The Bible says no one knows the day nor the hour. I, I feel very uncomfortable listening to you on this program, Mr. Camp, and it, it, it's kind of silly what you're preaching and stuff. It's stupid and crazy, man. I mean, what's up with it? Well, now, I, I can empathize with you if you are not listening to the whole Word of God, and if God has not opened your eyes... Uh, then, of course, this sounds crazy, it's, uh, and it's very, very, makes you very nervous, because deep in your heart, uh, you know there is a finally going to be a judgment day, and uh, there are lots of signs that show us that we're right near the day of judgment. And then to hear that hammered home, uh, on call after call after call, you just it 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 just it just makes you fearful deep inside. You don't even sense. And in fact, the Bible talks about in Jeremiah several places there would be fear on every side, and fear can bring about antagonism. It can bring about uh, uh, lots of terrible feelings and so on. And so I understand what you're talking about, but I'm sorry. We're simply talking about what the Bible teaches, and we have to be faithful to the Bible whether we like it or not. We have to be faithful. And as long as the questions are, are addressed to the Bible and, and the listener is willing to listen to what the Bible is saying, we're going to continue. In, and I'll, let me just say another thing. We're only 16 weeks from the, that day, and you can be, you can rest assured that in these next 16 weeks that 
that message or that subject is going to come up more and more and more. And there's going to be greater and greater fear in the lives of people because everybody know, knows intuitively there is a God. They know, even though they may uh, try to act like there is no God, or they know there is a judgment day, even though they uh, try to think that, you know, there, there can't be not an hour day, but but we just happen to be there, and so we have to be faithful to the Bible. Not we are. This program cannot be designed to please people. It has to be a program that is alto, altogether faithful to what God has told us. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Camping. Yes. Um, thank you for your program. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to make a comment to the fellow or fellows with the Midwestern accent who have called for two weeks straight at least twice a night. It's not easy getting through, and they're tying up the line for people. Well, excuse to... me, excuse me. We are, we have been having a flurry of problems because of a crusade of some kind by those who want to advance the idea of the seventh day Sabbath, and uh, and uh, and so we finally have brought that to an end by if someone calls in. If, for the next little while, on uh, the next few, several days, I don't know how long we'll maintain this, but and they call concerning the seventh day Sabbath, and are, are we're going to ask them or uh, tell them we're not going to take your call, and uh, we hate to do that, but but they're not listening to what the Bible is teaching. They are simply trying to advance their idea, which is totally unbiblical and and we don't need to hear that at all so please be be patient we're working on it okay um but um very good and your your patience really um inspires me um but to, to the man um if he would just not be rude and give other people a chance because he's not going to argue you into believing what he believes well, you know, these these people there, when you say, please don't be rude, they don't understand the meaning of the word rude. They have a vendetta. They have a crusade that they're going to make their point, which is totally a wrong, or a totally a, a wrong understanding of the, of the Bible. But they're, they're going to mess this program up if necessary to make their point, and we, will, we just don't want that to happen. So that's why we're we're not taking those calls right now. Okay, well, you're awesome, and I'll pray for them, and thank you very much. Thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Again, we are waiting for your call, 1-800-322-322. 5385 and shall we take the next call please welcome to open forum oh, oh my are do we have Hello? yes go ahead with your call uh yes uh carol i appreciate your program and uh, i've been trying to get through for about three years well now by god's mercy you did get through praise the lord um, I'd just like to give a little testimony quickly, if you allow me. I was a minister in the pulpit preaching, and and I realized uh, as I was going down the road and turning to your station, and every night I would turn away because I didn't like what I was hearing at first. But what happened was I God would lead me right back to your station. And I was determined I was going to listen to you all the way home and not turn away. And when I got home, God said, now, this man has stuck to my word, and you cannot go against my word. He has not gone out on the limb on his own. 
is stay right in the scriptures. And that's when I really, God really opened my eyes to the point that preaching in the pulpit, sometimes I was telling the truth, but I knew I was going against the grain. But I didn't understand why I was saying the things that I was saying. But as you have taught me, I understand that God was using me to bring forth truth, but I knew I was going against the denomination. But I, I just want to thank God for you. And in and, and my family, we, we have come out of the church. We listen to you constantly. And we are faithful to get in, in the word around the table every every chance we get. Now, my question, one question I have, is that the Bible speaks about the lion laying down with the lamb. Is that literal? Oh, that, that, that is a figure of speech. Remember, Christ spoke in parables. Uh, and uh, in, the, in Genesis, we read that before uh, sin came into the world, all the animals were herbivorous. That is, they were, there were no carnivorous meat-eating animals. So in the Garden of Eden, before sin came in, the lions could uh, lay, lay down with the lamb, and the wolf and the little uh, kid, the goat, uh, could lie down together because there was no killing of any kind. But when sin came in, then they not only did death come into the human world but also it came into the animal world and many animals became carnivorous so if you put a, a lion and a lamb in the same pen together tomorrow morning you're just going to see the lion and you're going to see uh, some shreds of the left of the of the lamb it would have been a, a feast for that lion and so when the Bible uses that phrase, the lion and the lamb will lie down together, it means that it's a picture of having become saved. It's like we're back in the Garden of Eden and sin had not come into our life. And uh, uh, that's, that's, that, it has not anything to do with, with uh, actual animals, literal animals. It has to do with describing the wonderful effect of salvation that we're, we're, we are eternally safe and secure in Christ's arms. You know, and, and, and it's, I believe it's just a travesty that the churches are not sharing the whole gospel with people. And, 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 and they must come out to hear the whole gospel. They have to be held to the denomination as far as they are going to go. God you know, bless you, and may God keep you. Well, thank you for calling. You know, we normally do not entertain testimonies on this program. We like to talk just about the uh, Bible itself. But I was very, very glad for your testimony because I can tell you the number of ministers, uh, and there are uh, obviously thousands and thousands and thousands of them, who are actually hearing the truth and coming out of their churches, uh, such as God has guided you to do, is very, very limited. It's very rare that we hear from a minister. There are a few that we've heard from, and so I was so glad to hear from you. It's an encouragement that if you came out of the church, then maybe there are some other ministers that even have, that have not called to tell us but have also come out. But I really thank you for your call. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Go ahead with your call, please. Brother Kenton? Yes. Yes, uh, thank you again. I'm in agreement with that minister that just called. You know, the only thing, I, try, I was so frustrated trying to find the verse, uh, my ways are not your ways, though my thoughts are not your thoughts, say it the Lord. I, I, I was getting, I couldn't remember which book that was written in. Well, I offhand do not remember either. And uh, if but, you, do you okay, have well, a... The point, the point I want to make is, why do people argue if my ways are are not your ways and though my thoughts why do people keep arguing the bible when they dispute it with you like this it just 
Because <laughs> mankind, and that includes me, and every human being, by nature, we are very proud. We think we are, uh, because we have a, a human mind that is far superior to the mind of an animal, and we can design things and build things and think things out, and so we're very proud and self uh, and, and convinced that we can solve the problems. We can think it out. And so by nature, we do not want to, uh, we don't want to humbly bow down to the authority of the Bible. We think we're smarter, actually, than God is. And, and uh, that is why people don't want to listen to the gospel. They, they all, uh, by nature, unless God opens our eyes, unless God opens our eyes, we think we know more than God. But when God opens our eyes, then we're broken before God and we, we uh, realize, I don't know anything. We approach the Bible begging God, Oh Lord, show me, could I learn something? And if I learn something, uh, will you help me to be obedient to what I have learned? Because, Oh Lord, I just want to do your will. And that will only happen when God has opened our eyes. May God keep you, Brother Camping. Thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, hello? Yes, go ahead with your call, please. Yeah, I actually just wanted to voice something that an earlier caller commented on, and... I am very disturbed by your particular viewpoint on your interpretation of the Bible. And I think you're basically just using this as an excuse to further your own means of, of what you think you know about the Bible. And I, I have sort of wonder what you're going to tell all of the people who listen to you on May 22nd and October 22nd when none of anything that you predicted comes to happen. Well, the fact is that you may not... Uh agree with what I am teaching, but I can assure you that I have only one desire and that I be as faithful as possible to the Word of God. And as a matter of fact, I welcome correction at any time if it is based on the Bible because I, I, I'll learn from a child. If a child it comes up with a, an insight into the Bible and that's possible, I'm, I'm grateful for it because I, I I don't know anything in myself. It has to come from the Lord, and and uh, so uh, whether whether uh, you like it or not, I'm sorry. I but I do give the chapter and the verse. I, sh I uh, we have materials that uh, show how we arrive at the timeline of history. For example, that's free of charge. We don't. We're not in this business to make money at all. Uh, if any books that we've written, and we've written quite a number of them, are all available free of charge and postpaid, and and uh, we uh, and we don't monitor the calls that come on this program. We give everybody an opportunity uh, to ask their question. But uh, uh, I'm sorry, we're we're trying to be as faithful as possible to the Word of God, and as be as humble as possible. And uh, But when we learn something from the Bible, we have to declare that. And you know the translation is not perfect. The original language is perfect. But, uh, but the more we know from the Bible, the more we can uh, check the translator to make sure that they made, did not make an error. And they, didn't, they translated without having uh, near the knowledge that we have in our day of God's plan for salvation and God's plan for the timing of the end. So there are quite often that times when we have to make a correction and we have to do it with great care, making sure that we don't violate anything in the original language. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Um, yes, Brother Camping, I was wondering if you could 
explain to me exactly what's going to happen on May 21st, uh, 2011? Yes, well, a little while ago I read a verse in uh, Revelation 16, and I'll read it again because this is going to be the opening the opening activity on May 21. Uh, uh, we read in Act, Re Revelation 16, verse 18, and there was a great earthquake, with which were, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake. Now, what is the purpose of the earthquake? It is to throw open all of the graves and tombs and mausoleums and any pits or whatever where anyone has ever been buried, whether they died as a believer or a true believer or as a, a an unsafe person. The graves are going to be thrown open, and two things are going to happen. First of all, and it's going to be happening simultaneously, uh, the true believers, their remains, whatever it is, dust or bones or body or whatever, is going to be resurrected, a glorified spiritual body, and in the sight of all those that are living, uh, that are living at that time still and are in the day of judgment and are not saved, will be caught up to heaven, uh, uh, to, together with uh, inst at the same moment, instantly, all of those who are true believers will instantly receive their glorified spiritual bodies, and they will be caught up together with these bodies that are come out of the graves. Simultaneously, the bodies or the remains, whatever there is, of the unsaved will be thrown out, uh, but not to come to life again, but to be shamed in the eyes of God. Uh, that is a part of their judgment, uh, even though they will not come to life and experience anything in the eyes of God, their, their remains, their body or whatever, is going to be desecrated. And, and, and in the, uh, because of that huge earthquake, undoubtedly millions of people living at that time will die, and uh, there will be no one to bury them, because it, uh, the, and their bodies are going to be out there rotting in, in the sun that still continues, and this is going to go on that way for five months, that people are dying and there, no one is burying them, uh, uh, burying them. So the earth is going to be a horror place beyond our understanding, a terrible place of horror. And those who are living for uh, uh, and thought that they were saved, they will be, as we read from the Bible, they will be weeping and gnashing their teeth and uh, calling to God, you know, we were, a, uh, I was a faithful pastor, I was a faithful Sunday school teacher, I was, I was, I was this or that, and uh, it'll be a, a terrible anger on their part. And there'll be no humility. The Bible teaches they're not going to be repenting. They just feel that they have been mistreated terribly, terribly by God. And because they had been hoping that the, when the rapture occurred, they would be raptured. And instead, they have seen a lot of other people that they never thought at all would be saved. They were not part of churches at all. And uh, they saw them being raptured, and so they will be dreadfully angry and upset by what is it really happening. Now, that's, that's the way we're going to be entered. The world is going to be introduced to the judgment day. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. Welcome to Open Forum. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead with your call. Um, oh, thank you. This is the first time I've been through. I really appreciate it. I have a couple of questions. I'm confused about something. Um, yeah, uh, please, excuse me. About... Excuse me just a moment. Pick out the question that is most important to you because we would like to limit each caller to one question. And then 30 days from now, if you can get through, you can ask another question. But ask the question that seems to be the most important to you at this time. All right. You, um, it's, it talks about um, 
Jesus coming from the line of David. But I'm confused because his his father, Joseph, I mean, his stepfather came from the line of David. Can you explain that to me? Because I'm, I'm confused about that. Yes, we, have, we have two geneal genealogical ta uh, tables in the Bible that, that lead up uh, to uh, the days of Jesus. One is in Matthew. It starts with Abraham and goes to David and then it goes from David through Solomon and through all of the kings of Judah until the last king who who uh, uh, was killed in 587 BC and then through another series of names until it gets to Joseph who was the stepfather of Jesus he was not related by in the bloodline at all to Jesus now that is Matthew chapter 1 then in Luke 3 there's another genealogical line it begins with God and then Adam and then goes from Adam through a series of names to Abraham and from Abraham to David the same as uh, uh, the same as uh, uh, the one in, in uh, Matthew chapter 1 but from David on it's entirely different it does not go through any of the kings that were in the line of David. It does not mention Solomon. It does not mention any of the kings. It goes to a brother of Solomon named Nathan, who is not a king, and then it goes through a whole series of names, none of whom were kings at all until it gets to the father of Mary uh, and uh, and that is the line of Jesus. It, in fact, uh, uh, the kingly line, therefore, of Jesus goes from David directly to Christ. Uh, whereas the kingly line of Joseph, or that we find in Matthew 1, goes through from David to Solomon and all the kings of Judah, and then it ends. There are no more kings. It has nothing to do with Christ. I see. Okay, well, thank you so much for clearing that up for me. And thank you for your program. May God richly bless you. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Thank you. Glory be to God. Isaiah 43.10. Isaiah 43. There we read... Isaiah 43, we read in which verse? 9 and 10. 9 and 10, let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, says Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Now, what is your question? Um, <laughs> let them hear and say it is truth, for you are my witnesses. Are these the same witnesses that are spoken in Revelation? two and three about the two witnesses and the witnesses are the true believers uh, the yes the ye are my witnesses that has to do with the true believers and uh, like for example we read in Revelation 11 their two witnesses were killed uh, 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 and they were they were killed that is they were not allowed to speak anymore in the churches and then they came to life again during the final 6100 days of the uh, uh, before judgment day and there it's still they still are witnessing for another 115 days or so and uh, uh, they are the true believers that are witnessing and that's what the winner God says ye are my witnesses that they are the ones that God is talking about watch and thank you for calling and sharing, 
And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Harold. I just wanted to um, let you know that I have been um, listening to you for many, many years, and I got called to, to the Lord from your family radio station. And I, we had met a Bible study group that um, knows you and been studying for 30 years, and we all feel that we're saved by the Lord through your word and your studies. However, I just want to make the comment that none of us feel that what you are finding, the end times, none of us feel that in our Bible study group that... Um, now, hold on, please. I'll be right back with you right after this message. We have a caller on the line who has been says she's been a listener a long time and she's part of a Bible study group that has also been listening. And yet... Uh, somehow they do not have agreement and now uh, what is your question I'm sorry what is your question oh my we've lost that caller I'm really sorry and but I know for a fact that all of us are saved and we we actually got called to the Lord from family radio and some of the people have been studying for 30 years and they know you personally but I'm just up. I don't understand why the Lord hasn't opened my eyes to this. And you say that you must not be saved if your eyes aren't open to the, to this. But why is it that none of us in our Bible study group, and we know we're all saved, feel that what you're saying, the end time, is going to be happening on May 21st? And why is it that if the Lord opened our eyes, why is it only you? that can figure out all these numbers and see this because I can guarantee Well, you excuse me, you know the fact is that there are thousands and thousands of people all over the world who are who are uh, have seen this, they've checked this out in the Bible and they have put and they know that it is correct and we we have all the proofs for example. But uh, I cannot tell you why why God has not opened your eyes to this so that you can see it? I'm not in. Uh, I'm not in charge of God's work. That's God's work. But you know, if I were you, and and I, I thought that I was uh, missing something or my eyes had not been opening, I would be praying and begging and begging and begging God. Oh Lord, have mercy on us that we might be truly thy thy people and because you see one of the marks of a true believer is humility it's just like when i say for example don't trust me don't trust me i'm not the authority at all the bible is the authority and and one of the characteristics of a true believer is that we go to the bible i, I know, and confess oh lord i don't know anything you have to open my eyes and and but i can't i can't uh, I uh, give you an answer to your question at all. You have to pray God for mercy. Just pray Him for mercy, and uh, I, we we uh, uh, lay it out in the in uh, in written form, uh, so that you can see where all these truths come from in the Bible, and uh, and uh, the and one of the one of the questions or one of the problems we have in life is that. We like to have consensus, and uh, so when some in the, your study group don't agree, then the others are likely to want to also uh, don't agree, uh, rather than feeling uh, estranged and knowing that they have to leave that study group because they're, they're not uh, following. But I, I, frankly, I cannot enter into your problem. I, all I can encourage you to do is really beg the Lord for wisdom. Keep begging the Lord for wisdom, and uh, uh, but I but I can assure you that oh, there are thousands and thousands of people that are listening to the Word of God and have come to the conclusion: yes, this is the teaching of the Word of God. Now, why those thousands do and your little study group does not, I have no way to answer you. But, but Harold, don't you agree that um, that is a really difficult thing to figure out in the Bible that you had figured out? 
with the numbers and stuff, why is it that only you really have figured that out? I can guarantee you that most of the people that listen to you would not be able to figure that out, but yet you're saying that God, for instance, in your... Um, no, no, let me no ask you, how, how many were at Mount Carmel? You know the story. Uh, how many were there that were opposed to the truth? There were 450 prophets of Baal. They were, they were religious prophets in the nation of Israel. They were all in agreement. And how many were opposed to them? How many? One, Elijah, Elijah. And who was right? Well, Elijah was, because when he prayed, fire came down from heaven. And so it is not a function of consensus. And remember, true believers, again and again, when you read the Bible, you don't find statements at all frequently about great numbers. There are a few, few verses that talk about believers in a, uh, as a big number, but most of the time it's talking about a remnant, just a tiny little remnant. When I look at the denomination I came out of, and I, uh, I was in that denomination for almost 70 years, and I, with my family, and I, and I was a teacher there for almost 50 years, and, and I really believed it was the most wonderful denomination and for many, many years. But as I began to search the Bible very, very carefully, I became, I became aware, finally, that they were not following the Bible the way they should, and so I, I, I was put out, and I, I, because I began to teach differently than the denomination felt, and so that was the best thing that ever happened to me, in my family. But I was going against the consensus. I was, I was, uh, uh, and yet there were uh, uh, already people beginning to listen uh, to the truth. And you remember, I, I am, I am not the authority. The Bible is the authority, and so just keep sh searching it out in the Bible. We we try to lay it out in our, in uh, various booklets and tracks and so on. And it, if you if you don't agree with it, well then uh, that's a problem between you and the Lord, not a problem with you and me because. I am not the authority, the Bible is. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. <clears throat> oh, yes. Hi, Mr. Camping. I appreciate your ministry. Would you please look at Hebrews 6, verses 4, 5, and 6, and then I'll ask my question. Yes, I'll do that. Hebrews chapter 6. Verses 4, 5, and 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open chain. Now, what is your question? Would this uh, refer to the churches in general or also to individual backsliders? This is, we, it was impossible to understand these verses until the last 20 years when God again has, when God has opened up our eyes to a whole lot of of truth that was not available before this time because when we read this if we read this 20 or more years ago 22 actually 22 years or more ago uh, we we would say uh, how can we understand this because uh, if a person uh, 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 it claims to be saved and then he fell away and he cries out to God for mercy can he still become saved of course that's the whole message of the Bible and yet this is saying that there's a time when when uh, they cry out for mercy and there's no possibility of salvation what in the world could this be but only today do we understand it because it is talking about what happened 
beginning in 1988 when God was finished using the churches as a as a place to uh, uh, wherein saved people were uh, because uh, Christ left the church and he installed Satan there and so anybody who's in the church during the last 22 years there there was no possibility of salvation because the Holy Spirit was not saving anybody and that's why it says here it's impossible who are the, for them uh, to uh, uh, to uh, 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 become sa- become saved, it was in, it's been impossible because God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who applies the Word of God to those whom He plans to save. But outside of the churches, during this final 17 months, approximately 17 months of the uh, 17 years rather of the church of the great tribulation god is saving many many people all over the world but it's totally outside of the churches because in the churches satan is ruling and those who are there think they are worshiping christ but they're worshiping satan and god uses or shows us how that is in second corinthians chapter 11 satan is there as an angel of light and as ministers, as ministers of righteousness, they sound and look just like they're holy, true believers, but they are servants of Satan. But thank you for calling and sharing. And it's so wonderful to know that outside of the churches, God is saving a great many. In Revelation 7, God indicates that he uses the language of great multitude or a large crowd that are becoming saved at this time and uh, that's wonderful to know because uh, then we can keep crying out for mercy O oh Lord uh, I, I have mercy have mercy and maybe I too might become saved if I'm not already saved but thank you for calling and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum well, thank you for calling and shall we take our next call Welcome to Open Forum. And shall we take our next call, please? Oh, excuse me. Would you turn your radio off? That will help. Hi, Brother Camping. Brother Camping? Yes, go ahead with your call. Yeah, Brother Camping. Um, hello? Hello. Oh, yeah. Just one second. Go ahead with your call, please. Okay, Brother Camping, could you please read... Um, Numbers chapter 9, verse 23, and then I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, Numbers 9, 23, and let's look at that, what, what that says. Uh, at the commandment of Jehovah, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of Jehovah, they journeyed. They kept the charge of Jehovah at the commandment of Jehovah by the hand of Moses. Now, what is your question? My question is, is uh, when, when we were covering that in, in the family Bible study this morning, it occurred to me that in a spiritual dimension, because a tent or a tabernacle is actually our bodies referred to as that, could it be that this is a spiritual uh, reference to the rapture, that before the rapture we're resting in our tabernacle, in our bodies, and at the commandment of the Lord we journey, we journey to heaven in the rapture? Uh, well, the fact is, the context is that uh, that when it's talking about when Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years and God gave his commandments to them through a pillar of fire by night and through a cloud by day when they whenever the cloud moved or the fi- pillar of fire moved it was a commandment of God to uh, close up your tents and begin to follow uh, to the next resting place and when the uh, when the pillar of fire or the uh, that was at night time or and during the daytime the cloud when it when it uh, stopped then that means this is where you're going to rest until the cloud and the pillar of fire moves again in other words they were representing the law of god that is telling uh, that was commanding israel uh, uh, and uh, and uh, so 
uh, now how that relates to today, I'm not I'm not qualified to tell you. I haven't really thought about that. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, uh, Dr. Yes. Camping. I have a uh, simple question. You refer constantly that uh, the Lord will never speak to you audibly, but He will speak to you in your prayers. That is correct, isn't it? <laughs> I'm I'm talking uh, the Lord speaking to me in my prayers. I, did I ever say that? I never did say that at all. Never, never, never. The Lord speaks to us through His Word, through His Word. And uh, now the Lord can put thoughts into our head uh, that uh, 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 we're praying for wisdom and what should I do, and I, and then we have an idea. Uh, sometime a little bit later that maybe this is what I ought to do and, and we can believe that God is, is guiding us but we do not hear the voice of God at all we only hear it through reading the Bible that is where we're hearing the voice of God and thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to Open Book Forum Harry, will you be preparing a speech before you leave for heaven on May 21? Will you prepare a speech? Yeah, will you, you be preparing like a speech no, before no, May 21? No, 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 like no. I'm not the center of attraction at all. The Bible is. The Bible is. You keep praying for wisdom from the Bible. Keep praying for, for God's mercy. And uh, don't pray for, don't talk about Carol Camping. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm just a, a, a teacher uh, trying to get people, in, showing people where to read in the Bible. But I, 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 I don't amount to a hill of beans as far as being important to this world. It's God who is important. God's Word. Everything centers on the Word of God. That's where you have to put your focus. One that's going out of your family, or will your wife join you? Will I what? Will your will you wife? Be the only one out of your family that's going to heaven, or will your wife join you? I I can't know anybody's. I, I know some of my family. They have no. They are not understanding these things at all. And I pray for them, and my wife prays for them again and again that God might open their spiritual eyes. And I don't know whether God will. He may not. And I, but I do know that God does everything perfectly. So whether they end up, those that are still not understanding, whether they end up being entering into the judgment day or not, I have to leave that with the Lord altogether. I, I, uh, that's the only. Uh, it's all in God's, God's program, not in my program. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Brother Campy. Yeah. Could you read Revelation 10, 7? And I have a few other verses also. Uh, could you turn your radio off, please? That will help. Revelation 10, verse 7. There we read. Revelation 10. Verse 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Uh, now, what is your question? Could you go to Colossians 2, 2 and 3? Colossians 2, 2 and 3. Colossians 2... Two and three, there we read. Um, let, let me start at verse one to pick up the context. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts 
might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding in the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, what is your question? Now, Ephesians 1, 9. I'm sorry? Ephesians 1, 9. All right, this will be the third, and, that's mm -hmm. the, and then where you I must ask your question. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1, 9. There we read, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now, what is your question? My question is, it's, I just start reading these verses, and I see the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. Um, is it just to let people know that God came down in human form and flesh? And do these all go together? Am I right there? Oh, no. The mystery of Christ is, is very, very... Uh, covers many, many subjects. For example, the Bible talks about a mystery being known uh, to uh, uh, the Apostle Paul. Has been giving it, was given the information by God that people from every nation, uh, way beyond the nation of, of Jews, of, of those who were descendants of Abraham, would become believers. That was called a mystery. And the whole mystery of who God is, the mystery of of why He saved us, the mystery of of uh, a lot of the detail of Judgment Day, why why it, 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 this is being done or that is being done. We read it in the Bible. We know it's true and trustworthy, but we don't necessarily understand why it is, uh, and uh, so. Uh, and, and particularly when we think about God, we, He is a, a huge mystery. How He could be infinite in His being, how He could create this world in six days with its millions of life forms that are all very complex. Uh, the mystery of why He wrote the Bible the way He wrote it, and uh, altogether understanding that. There's lots of mystery. And we just have to be very humble and thank the Lord for what we do understand. And if we do understand it, we have to make sure that we recognize uh, that we have carefully, uh, we're ready to meet any verse in the Bible uh, to make sure that we are not in, co in uh, that, that might relate to the same subject, that we are not in, uh, that we're not uh, fudging in any way in, in our understanding. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Brother Camping. Yes. I'm calling about um, Revelation 14. Could you read that? Revelation chapter 14. There we read. And which verse? Um, I'm sorry, 714. Revelation 714. There we read. In 7, 14. Mm -hmm. And I said unto him, Sir, now uh, let's uh, let's back up. Uh, let's start with verse uh, 9. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Then we go down to verse 13. One of the elders, or uh, one of the elders, uh, answered, saying unto me, "Who are, or what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence come they? Whence come they?" And uh, now in verse 14 we get the answer. And I said unto him, "Sir, thou knowest." And he said to me, "These are they which came out of." Great tribulation, and actually, there's a there's a uh, it, it, in the original it has the great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, what is your question? 
I still, I'm not understanding who are these. They are um, the which came out. You see, that is the great tribulation is the is the 23 year period that we have been pre presently going through that will end on May 21 of this of this year. That'll be the end of that 23 year, a full 23 years, 8400 days. Uh, but the fact is. Uh, that it, it was only during the last 17 years approximately, uh, in actuality 6,100 days of that 23 year period, that it God, that God again uh, uh, began to save uh, during the first 2,300 days of that period, virtually nobody anywhere in the world or in the churches did become saved. But at the following that, the during the last 17 years, there were 6,100 days uh, uh, during which God saved uh, these who are robed with white robes. There's a final in-gathering that is going on right now. That's why it is so wonderful that as we uh, hear the, the terrible news that Judgment Day is almost here, we can still cry out and pray, pray, Oh, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I, I know I'm not saved, and I'm not sure whether I'm saved, but, oh, Lord, have mercy. Could it be that I, too, might be included? And maybe, maybe I might be one. I can't get myself saved. I can't do any self to get myself saved, but I can cry out and beg the Lord and beseech Him. And that's what this is talking about. Uh, they, there, there are many people who are being saved. They're not part of any church or any congregation. They're just scattered all through the world, and particularly the Bible emphasizes the last shall be first, so it particularly underscores those who have never heard the gospel before and for the first time are hearing words from the Bible like Judgment Day, and they're pleading with God for mercy. Thank you so much for your phone um, for answering my question. And I just want to say I love your show, and I just pray for you. Well, thank you so much for calling. Now, we don't have time to go to another caller. I'm sorry, but I really want to take this time to thank you for your patience with me. Uh, I'm not a perfect host by any stretch of the imagination. I just try to faithfully be as faithful as possible to the Word of God. And I'm grateful for each question, and uh, uh, and uh, I hope that you will uh, you will be encouraged to listen to the Bible. That the Bible, that is where God speaks to us, and we'll give you whatever help we can. All of our uh, all of our teachings are are in written form, or most of them are, so that you can read them and know where from the Bible they have come from and uh, and uh, so and now i have to say good night